Now, the Economic and Organized Crime Office has recommended to the Attorney General's Department possible prosecution of shareholders of some defunct savings and loans companies as well as microfinance institutions. This is after the receiver appointed by the Bank of Ghana referred these institutions to the Central Bank for some advice. George Rafi has the rest of the story. The prosecution is expected to cover 10 microfinance companies and 10 savings and loans firms that were liquidated by the receiver appointed by the Bank of Ghana. Key among these firms in terms of their names are Ideal Finance, GN Savings and Loans, and CDA Savings and Loans, as well as Unicredit Savings and Loans. While on the side of the microfinance institutions, Jadifua Danfu and CIG are among the few names that have been captured in the 10 list of companies put forward by the central bank. According to a statement issued by the Bank of Ghana, the Economic and Organized Crime Office has taken this action after conducting an independent investigation as to how the shareholders and directors of these defunct institutions have contributed to their collapse. According to the Economic and Organized Crime Office, it is working hard at the Attorney General's office towards the speedy prosecution of these persons and individuals behind these companies. In in a related development, the Economic and Organized Crime Office says it is investigating some firms over possible financial crime. Now, this was after these institutions made fake claims of large amounts of funds remitted through their banks that has been withheld by the Bank of Ghana. However, after several investigations, it revealed that these claims were fake and has therefore made some progress towards the prosecution of these said firms and individuals behind these companies. Well, let's stay a little longer on this issue as we're joined by Zoom by financial analyst and finance lecturer at the University of Ghana Business School, Dr. Benjamin Amwa, for his perspective on this story. Of course, we're grateful that you could join us. What do you make of this statement calling for prosecution? Thank you. The prosecution is in the right direction because the law makes it clear that if directors and higher management level personnel of banks or financial institutions do engage in activities that bring a financial institution onto it needs, in other words, license revocation, then it is right that the regulator, if the regulator believes that there are some financial underhand dealings, will bring the perpetrators to book. So it is in the right direction. Mm. But of course, there are questions about the time spent in this entire liquidation process. You know, as an expert in the field and a lecturer as well, do you think the Bank of Ghana has kept too long a time in dealing with the liquidation process? You see, in issues like this, you have to be a bit cautious and then make sure that you get your facts right before you, you finally hand over your investigations and cases that you have raised to the appropriate contest to deal with. Yes, there is a concern that it has been slow, but you don't want to get it wrong. So if the delay from Bank of Ghana is to make sure that the right thing is done, then we should embrace it. It is better we hasten slowly to get to the bottom of it, to have in place lessons that repeat it, that will prevent it from happening in the future, than to rush the whole process and then in the end becomes problematic for all of us. So indeed, it is good that finally we are getting the headlight on that Bank of Ghana is taking the case to Iyoko for possible prosecutions. Mm. And speaking of lessons, what could be the impact of this particular move by the central bank on the confidence that will be reposed or if not removed on the savings and loans companies as well as the microfinance sectors? It is important because the signal to the market is that you can't run any financial institutions anyway, anyhow. You have to play by the rules and make sure that you get your, your act right. It was worrying when it looked like the central bank was not responding to holding the possible characters responsible for the wrong that we have been committed. But now that we have the central bank coming out to say that it is at a position where it can hand over its investigation to Yoko for possible prosecution. We think that clearly the market will respond positively 
and it will create high level of confidence for us to do business with the microfinance as well as the savings and loans institutions. Indeed, and of course, as regards the first part of the statement, does it appear that there are yet again crippling money laundering activities within the space, as, as we have seen? Yeah, the issue of money laundering is something that, unfortunately, we cannot do without. Because, you see, most especially today that we have technology driving banking and banking services, you will always have individuals who may want to use the system that has been created to, to illegally accrue funds to themselves or to move funds from one end of the world to the other. But it will also be reassuring to know that the regulator and the players of the industry will have in place measures to spot some of these red flags, some of these suspicious activities. And when they spot it, they can deal with it and then make sure that whoever is behind such wrongful acts are dealt with so that the industry will be clean for us, the industry will endure the confidence that we all need to have in the industry so we can engage in the financial services industry. So it is indeed good that the regulator is clamping on suspected money laundry issues. Indeed, ben, Dr. Benjamin Amwa, we're grateful that you could join us. He is a financial analyst and finance lecturer at the University of Ghana Business School.